nueva edición. ¿Qué tal amigos? ¿Cómo están? Esto es Auto 060 aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Tenemos un show muy especial. Vamos a tener el honor de hablar con James David Power III, el fundador de JD Power and Associates. Vamos a hablar también de lo que está pasando, de lo que pasó en Las Vegas esta semana con el Consumer Electronics Show, de la tecnología que va integrada en los autos. Vamos a revisar los premios que dio la, la compañía, el portal de internet de información autobytel.com y finalmente en el último segmento un tema de seguridad con uh, el colega de State Farm para hablar de las cosas que a veces llevamos en el maletero y que son uh, en realidad una carga innecesaria uh, y cómo nos puede afectar esto en la seguridad. But now for this uh, first show we have the honor, uh, we're switching back to English now again because we have the honor to talk to James David Power the Third, who was the founder of JD Power and Associates, and we're going to review uh, in maybe in this uh, few minutes a little bit of the history of uh, the amazing company that he founded and like the, his view on the auto industry nowadays. How are you, Mr. Power? Fine, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, first, for for uh, sharing the sum of. Uh, Your time with us, uh, especially at the beginning of the year, where uh, everybody's having good ideas of what to do and maybe thinking about uh, uh, buying a new car. And you founded one of the companies that uh, serve, uh, give the best service to to consumers. Uh, can you? Uh, we started in 1968 uh, on our kitchen table. Uh, my wife and uh, three children, and the fourth one on the way. And uh, we started doing surveys by mail, uh, and uh, since my prior experience had been uh, in Detroit, uh, I got into the automobile uh, survey uh, and uh, was uh, very uh, delighted to find out that we could do the surveys ourselves without uh, having uh, worked for one particular car company, yeah. we did the whole industry. And wow. That was the key element. We owned the data. Yeah, exactly. And, and and it was independent. So you you didn't really have to like uh, like uh, put a, a, a pretty face on some of the results, I guess, when they weren't good, right? In uh, 1968, uh, automobiles uh, had a lot of problems. And... Uh, The customers were interested in filling out our questionnaire and adding additional information uh, on the back of the cover letter and uh, send it back to us. And we found out that uh, they were very interested in their vehicle and they wanted their uh, the problems that they had, which were mostly uh, the engine and uh, transmission, the whole drivetrain. Uh, was causing problems, and uh, once uh, the manufacturers got the feedback from those customers, uh, they improved tremendously. And today, you can get, uh, you can uh, find that uh, there's very little problems with the engine and transmission. It's, yeah. Uh, now the new electronics that are in the car. Yeah, I, I guess back then in 1968, the cars were themselves very simple, and uh, but still had some problems, as you said. But nowadays, I mean, cars, I mean, in the next segment, we're going to talk to our colleague James Bell from General Motors, who was at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, talking about like having video cameras and GPS, navigation, connectivity to like to be a Wi-Fi spot. Uh, Lincoln uh, has... Uh, design, redesigned some of their uh, dashboards where they have gone back to the knobs because they sell to the older population and uh, like myself and uh, you uh, are much more familiar with turning the radio on with a knob and they've uh, gone back to providing that to their uh, specific customers. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting in that sense because, yeah, you have to have actually both things uh, nowadays. So, uh, Mr. Power, how do you see the auto industry nowadays? I mean, um, they, they base, as you said, there's some problems with that part of the, of the new cars with all the electronics, but in general, I mean, the, the change from back then to now, it's tremendous, right? Right. I, I would say there's uh, three to four hundred percent reduction in problems today. So you can't go wrong, and 
with all the cars that are being produced today uh, in the and and sold in the United States, uh, it's a wide range uh, of products, but they're all closer together. They're, they've uh, improved the quality so much that it's uh, really hard to differentiate from one. Uh, uh, brand to another and one model to another. Which uh, also makes it a little bit tougher for the consumer to make the final decision, right? And that's why uh, services like uh, you started back in 1968, like, and nowadays with JD Power and Associates are so important because, I mean, there's so much information that you have to take into account when you make that decision to buy that new car. Yes. And what's happening too, is, of course, is the internet and the availability of the information uh, 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 to all of the uh, consumers out there. So they uh, actually do more research on the vehicle that they want to buy and have it, uh, a better understanding of it when uh, they go into the showroom than the salesperson that is trying to sell them the, the vehicle. Yeah. And so they, Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The, the, the consumer is in charge today. Yeah. And it's only going to increase more and more. And they know what they want, and they don't want to have uh, a lot of uh, interchange uh, trying to sell them something that they, they really don't need or don't want. Yeah, so uh, they're taking the, the, the power away from the dealership, which is, is a great thing, but also it can be a, a bit confusing. So, well, if, we, if you could give a, a consumer, somebody who is uh, thinking of going out and, and, and getting a new car, if you can give them like three tips, like uh, wh wh how should they go to that dealership uh, to get that new car and get that, the best deal? You don't have to go to the dealer uh, necessarily. Yeah. Uh, you can buy it online. And I think that's uh, the trend that's uh, going to increase uh, uh, dramatically. And uh, so uh, the days of uh, uh, selling in the showroom and then going in to see the F&I people, finance and insurance people, is, uh, is going to be passe. It's going to be done on the computer. So, yeah, but still today, there's a lot of uh, deals going on at the actual dealership. When do you see this change happening? Maybe five years, it's going to, I mean, the dealerships are going to exist for service, but the sales part of it, when do you see, like, really changing forever? Oh, I, it's not going to be changing forever. It's going to be changing forever, but the, the dealerships uh, will, uh, will adapt to it as well, and... Uh, They will uh, still be involved. We see the dealerships are, are going to be around for a dozen or more years. Yeah. So, uh, in other things, uh, I mean, the auto in industry obviously has changed completely. Uh, more, more so, I, I would say, like in the past five to ten years than probably in the previous 30 or 40 years, right? Uh, do you agree with that, like with the hybrid cars and electric cars now? Yes, uh, and I, I think that uh, there's a room for the electric vehicles, and uh, I also see uh, uh, compressed natural gas uh, becoming a bigger factor. Natural gas is that it will allow the United States to be uh, independent of uh, the oil from the Middle East, yeah. and that's going to be a, a big change. Yeah, and there are also other technologies like hydrogen cars, with, I guess, but I guess that, tech, that infrastructure is not there. I mean, I think Hyundai is launching a car only in California in a certain area where there's like stations to refill with hydrogen, and that's more or less the same case with uh, gas cars, right? Yeah, that's right, and uh, hydrogen uh, will be factored in as well, and uh, with the technology uh, improvements, it's... it's uh, It's going to be better vehicles, better fuel consumption, and uh, uh, they're going to be happy with uh, the new technology that is still uh, coming on board.
Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Power, uh, again, like, thank you for your time and everything. But can you, uh, in the final few minutes uh, of this uh, interview, can you tell what uh, crucial lessons that brands can learn from their consumers, especially nowadays when there's so much information available? Well, they, they have to get into providing that information as well. It's an interchange of information. And uh, uh, they can do that uh, with the new technology that we have coming uh, in the uh, uh, internet sphere. And so I, I think that they will uh, adapt to it. The manufacturers will adapt to it. And they'll have instant information. And so uh, uh, they can uh, actually communicate with uh, their potential customers. Yeah. So, uh, James, uh, Dave uh, Power the Third. there's also a new book about the, your, your story, right? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yes. Uh, we um, have been uh, doing a lot of uh, surveying of consumers and customers, car owners. And uh, over the uh, uh, 40 years, uh, I would say that with uh, millions of of people have filled out our questionnaires and sent them back to us. And I, I think that that is uh, uh, something that uh, I would like uh, them to understand, and that's the purpose of the book, is to thank them for uh, supporting uh, J.D. Power and Associates uh, by filling out these questionnaires that uh, were fed right back to the manufacturers and they acted on it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. We're going to share in our Facebook page all the information about where can they uh, look for the book. And uh, again, uh, James Dave uh, Power III, founder of J.D. Power and Associates. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bueno, ahí estaba la entrevista con James Day Power, el fundador de J.D. Power and Associates, la compañía que él ya vendió en el año 2005 y que brinda todavía gran información. Cuando regresemos aquí en Auto 060, vamos a hablar con James Bell de General Motors sobre las presentaciones que tuvieron en el Consumer Electronics Show allá en Las Vegas. Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Moto.